All right, guys and girls. Hello, YouTube. It's 5.45. And I woke up early. And uh, I was planning on taking a, a kind of a more adventurous ride, but uh, I ran out of time. So I really want to try to make a uh, ride down to the uh, to the Santa Ana River Trail that takes me uh, very far out of my way and um, I got my extra battery so maybe I'll just do that ride uh, on the way home. So right now we're on Chapman Avenue in the city of Orange. Slowly making our way to uh, downtown. Downtown Orange. I wish I would have got my, my stuff together a little faster. We're going to hit Glacelle, which turns into Grand. have its lights on so the footage is gonna look bright but it's actually still pretty dark right now that little car didn't have its lights on so just to break the monotony of Main Street we'll go ahead and take uh, we'll just we'll just stay on Glacelle that turns into Grand and uh, kind of have a normal ride and uh, 
and do that. It's nice and cool this morning. Feels good. passing over the Santiago Creek Trail and Park Park's off to my left. how much broken glass is, <laughs> is everywhere. Everywhere I ride, there's broken glass. I don't know if people are just taking uh, bottles and tossing them out their windows or what. There's a guy out there with a, one of those advertising signs. It's kind of strange this early in the morning to be out there with one of those advertising signs and he's actually on the wrong side of the street where people can't see him. to uh, 17th Street and we're gonna keep going. I think we're gonna turn on, uh, I think I'm gonna turn on Santa Ana and go over by the train station.
this bike wants to take off. I put in my, uh, I swapped batteries again this weekend. I don't know what it is about this battery. They both last the same amount of time. But, uh, this battery just seems to have way more, uh, way more punch. I, I don't understand. I don't understand how that works. So this is getting close to the one year mark of me making this ride. And uh, I really don't feel any signs of uh, slowing down. I'm really uh, surprised that this bike's done as, as, uh, as good as it has. I'm hoping by uh, by this time next year I'll be uh, let's do this. Oh my God, there's a train. I'll be doing. Uh, oh my gosh, I'll be doing this ride uh, on an e cells five star. That's my. I know a year is a long, a long ways away, but. So if I can get that E-Cells bike, I'll be able to ride a lot faster. Uh, I'll be able to get a lot more range. So I'll be able to start going a lot further out of my way on these standard commutes. Yeah, right now, yeah, I'll be able to ride faster and further. So that's that's where I, what I want to do. So I can take this uh, this one hour that I give myself to get to work. You know, if I can go 35 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour, you know, out towards the creek trail. Yeah, I'll really be able to cover some ground. Because with this bike, I can make it, but I've got to, I've got to, uh, you know, monitor my, uh, battery life and I have to uh, you know I can always swap batteries but to swap batteries uh, in the middle of my ride it's not too it would probably take an extra five minutes to swap it out but and then I've got to strap the battery back down so I just don't like stopping you know for that amount of time Especially in, in the areas that, uh, that I want to explore, you know. I don't want to have to be out in the middle of that. The west side of Santa Ana. In the darkness, uh, swapping a battery out. It's just not smart so all right so we've made our way to standard wow look at that race car
So I've never taken standard in the morning, I don't think. Yeah, this is the uh, Cornerstone Cornerstone Village neighborhood is what they call it online. Definitely a lot of activity this early in the morning. Going past the Mini Street neighborhood. I should have. I should have. Uh, let's get on the sidewalk. So you see these. Uh, this LMST. So starting probably a two or three blocks back, this uh, LMST um, tagging is everywhere. It's uh, this is that little neighborhood I cut through before. It's actually on the front of the apartments we're looking at too, along the front, right on the uh, standard. Pretty serious, uh, could be a pretty serious area if you if you were here in the wrong time of the uh, of the day.
all these streets are very similar to ride on. So grand, standard, like all these, these neighborhoods are, this section, all these sections are very similar in the way they look. But, here to Warner so we could go left and go to Red Hill or right um, we go to right we'll probably go right and then we can hit uh, you know we'll go hit the bike the bike path so we're in the uh, we're in the Logan neighborhood right now. We're gonna ultimately end up on Main Street. Wow, look at all this trash. Interesting. So we're gonna cut to Logan. Uh, or I don't know why I said Logan neighborhood. We're not in the Logan neighborhood, we're in the Delhi neighborhood. I don't know why I was thinking Logan. So we'll cut through uh, Delhi Park. jump onto the uh, neighborhood bike path. I gotta be careful, I got a lot of weight. I got a lot of weight on this bike right now. We got a little National Guard base right here. It's kind of a trip, it's right next to a school. All these vehicles just sitting here. I got a 
moth. I have a moth on my shoulder. I think in my ride I pointed out yesterday that they had that, uh, they're setting up this community down here again. The police were over here a few weeks ago along with uh, people to uh, kind of dismantle this uh, encampment. And it looks like Something went down at the encampment, so it's kind of kind of interesting. So they got them all the way down to. Uh, What's up, man? Good morning. What's up with all the cops, bro? Jesus. Somebody get killed down there or what? God damn. It's a good spot for them to be down there. It's not like there's a, you know, it's not, it's out of the way. You know, people don't, people don't go down there. I don't even think that the tracks are in use down there. So like, they want to live, they want to live down there and set up a camp and do their drugs and just leave them alone. Yeah, there was a uh, There was cop cars all the way down, so if you if you keep going on, so if you stay on the bike path I was on, it goes all the way over to Flower Street. Actually, it goes all the way to Bristol, and I think you can keep going all the way to uh, Fairview on that bike trail. But Alton, there's a street called Alton that goes right there, so the police were well, you have Flower Street as well, but the cops, there's cop cars all the way down to out, so probably you know, a good half mile of cop cars. Wait, what are they gonna do, you know? 
I can't imagine that it makes any sense to to go down there and bust people doing drugs or doing whatever it is they're doing. So I feel like something else happened, you know? Something more like uh, Yeah, something more like uh, an incident, some kind of a violent incident. Maybe they're down there trying to help them out, you know, like get them help, you know. Yeah, maybe they're just going down there and talking to them and seeing if they can help them out and find a place to live or. just one of those things it's like so most most the uh, the addicts that I see now and the homelessness and those encampments those are all uh, yeah those are gonna all be people on fentanyl you know and I just don't feel like, uh, I don't know, I just, I don't feel like, that it's ever gonna stop, you know? There's never, you know, there's no, there's really no solution. no solution to the fentanyl crisis. It's got to, I mean, they're not going to, I mean, they're not going to stop bringing that drug in to the U.S. I mean, you know, that's never going to stop, right? So this, I mean, the best the best uh, it has to start in like it has to start in You know, educating uh, these younger, this younger generation, and I think like Yeah, I think it's always going to be there. It's 
it's just always going to be there. You know, you have people that that come from um, just really uh, terrible upbringings, you know? I think that's... Uh, Yeah, kids, kids growing up in very poor, abusive environments. Where that, you know, that kind of stuff is just a part of their lives and they grow up and they do the same thing and have kids and their kids do the same thing. You almost have, would have to have a pro, like programs. I'm sure they do. I don't know that much about it. But. but you gotta, you, you like, you have to start with these younger generations, you know, because these guys that out, are out on the street right now, it's, it's not too late for them, but it's like. They're gonna have to make those those choices themselves. So you, you gotta start with the younger generation. You gotta have teachers. And groups that can identify troubled children. Children that are coming from really uh, destructive family lives and you have to be able to identify them at a young age and really guide them through throughout their whole lives so you have a program that starts in grade school elementary school and follows them all the way through to college, you know, but but even that won't work because you're going to have other kids that aren't going to want to do stuff like that, you know, and then these kids are going to find themselves hanging out with people in their neighborhoods, and then it's just. Anyway. We will uh, catch you on the next video.